District, we appreciate your being here and the word of God that has come forth in the house tonight. And everybody that's going to help him preach and take ownership of the word as it comes tonight. You lift your hands, extend them toward him tonight and pray the blessing and anointing of God come down upon him tonight. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you. God, 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 we love you, Jesus. Come on, let's extend those hands towards heaven. God's in this house. He's here to do something powerful. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We love you. We love you, Jesus. Oh, mighty, mighty, mighty God. The presence of almighty God in his utter absolute faithfulness is here. As I stated before, he is open for business. Praise God. If you would, turn with me to the book of Job, chapter number one. Again, I want to say thank you to the sponsors, steering committee, anybody, everybody involved with hosting this conference. And... Uh, I'm just going to make this statement. And uh, many of the brethren on the platform and throughout this congregation know, brothers and sisters, you don't, you don't just find this everywhere. You just, you just don't. And I'm not saying that's right. I'm certainly not saying that's good. But thank God it's here. Thank God, thank God. And there is, there is nothing, there is absolutely nothing that draws, amen, and lifts and gathers people like people who bask in the presence of God. And that's why this conference is continually growing and uh, and there is a liberty here in several directions and so we we're thankful for it and we are thankful for the invitation to be here oh I feel the Holy Ghost I really feel the Holy Ghost okay familiar territory the book of Job chapter number one Beginning with verse number 13. There was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. There came a messenger unto Job and said, <clears throat> The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped. Alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, fell upon the camels, have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in thy eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Verse 20, then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped and said, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
What a God. What a man. What a man. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would anoint our hearts, every single man, every woman, every young person, every child. Lord God, in Jesus' name, we beseech you that you would readily, powerfully, distinctly, forcefully talk to all of us, individually, collectively, that your will might be done and expedited in and through our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, no doubt, the most often repeated mathematical equation in the world that is repeated for a host of reasons, and few of which tend to be mathematical, is 2 plus 2 equals 4. A lot of times that is stated in an effort to bring someone's attention to the fact that they ought to be getting the lesson that you're trying to get through to them. And it's like, <clears throat> sir, ma'am, young lady, 2 plus 2 equals 4. And it's not that they don't know that, but hopefully it will register, amen, that if this is so true, then this and this and this is true. So due to that, it is probably the most oft-repeated mathematical formula in the world, at least in our Western culture. There are others that are exceedingly well-known and used often. This one is used more often than any other mathematical formula. That is A equals L times W, which is simply every carpet layer uh, house builder, etc., knows that. That is area equals length times width. That's how you find out how many square feet there is in a floor. Another one that is used is C equals 2 pi r. Circumference equals 2 times radius times pi, 3.14. Probably if you were asked to give the most famous mathematical equation in history, especially with its advent in the 20th century, actually late 19th was used in the 20th, it would be E equals mc squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. Now that one changed the world in which we live. Amen. But I'm not here to talk about any of those, but I do want to talk to us about what I feel is the most important equation in our lives. For the next few minutes, I really want to preach to all of us about what is the very most single important equation in our lives. And if we can get this equation down, I promise you it will change our lives. It will change us. It will change our world. It will change your world. And if enough get it, it'll change your church. If we all get it, it will change. God only knows the power. Amen. Now, this is E plus R equals O. E plus R equals O. And what that is, event plus response equals outcome. And it's true regardless of the event. Event plus Response, whatever it is, equals or determines outcome. 
Now, one study that I read stated by a psychologist, pretty prominent. Uh, this was his assumption. I think it's, it's pretty good. He said that whatever you are right now, now this is without the God factor. This is just life. That whatever you are right now is exactly what you're going to be five years from now, except for three main factors. Number one, the books you read. Number two, the places you go. And number three, the people you meet. Those are the three most impressive factors in human life, barring, of course, some kind of tragedy or winning the lottery or something like that, which we don't have to worry about. Praise God. So it's the books we read, the places we go, the people we meet. But you and I live in an entirely different dimension than what those of this world live in. Because we know that however important those things are, there is a far, far, far greater influence in what we're going to be, amen, five years from now than what we are right now. And we know that that is God. But I also want to take it this far. The God factor means nothing. if you don't respond to him correctly. He's there in him. We all, this entire world, live and move and have our being. But his influence, amen, is pretty minimal when you consider humanity and their everyday lives. But it's not minimal in our lives, those who respond to him correctly. Those who respond to his creation, the sun, the moon, and the stars, and stand in awe and say, this screams to me even his eternal power and Godhead. Hallelujah. And on and on and on and on. Can I propose to you that the reason you're here tonight is because somewhere, someplace back yonder, and I don't care if you were raised on a Pentecostal pew, somewhere God moved and you responded correctly. You heard a word preached and you responded correctly. Amen. You found a place to pray. Amen. You responded to the moving of the Holy Ghost, such as we experienced a few moments ago. Amen. And it's our response that dictates what all of that outcome is going to be. That's the reason the outcome from some individuals going out of an apostolic service can be so far greater than others that go out chewing their gum, looking for the next hot dog stand, and are unchanged. It was the same God, same word, same place, same location, same moving of the Holy Ghost, but different responses. And that determined the outcome. Amen. Can I stop here and state that's the reason that altar calls are unbelievably, exceedingly, essentially important. I don't care if you don't have one sinner in the house. And I have, I told our our church when I took it, that church of 30 people, I said, don't ever think. I said, it will be an exceedingly rare service that I don't close with an altar call. Because it's at that moment, and that moment right there is the most important part of every service. I know sometimes I've introduced and will be introduced as saying we've come to the most important part of the service. Well, that may be up to that point, but it's not the most important part of any service. The most important, crucial part of any service is when the Word of God has gone forth, and right then and there, we respond to it. And we show God what that means to me. This is what I want, God. This is how I want it to be in my life. And we respond to God. Amen. And you say, but it, I may not one week from that 
service, maybe three days from that service. I may not even remember what was preached. That doesn't make any difference. God absolutely remembers, but more importantly, he'll never forget your response. And that goes up, amen, into the bin that makes up solutions and answers and ministerings for your life. Big doors swing on little hinges. And so we must respond to the things of God. So whatever you are now, the difference between that and what you're going to be five years from now, yes, people you meet, places you go, books you read, but above by far how we respond to God on a daily basis. And to the events of life. Now, it's those events that it gets tricky. Because not all events are good. And not all events are fun. Amen. But they all need a proper response in order to get a proper outcome. I'm quickly going to take a man note of a man named Noah and ask you to take note of the world in which he lived, the conditions of that world with its violence, its marrying, its giving in marriage, its godlessness and its idolatry, amen, <clears throat> apparently of things rather than necessarily idols. It was the day like our day. And that unbelievably huge task that was given to Noah and to his three sons of building and providing, amen, in spite of the disbelief of his world and his generation and the no doubt mockery that was heaped upon him and all of the insanity that, that swirled in his world. But there was an event and he gave the proper response and the outcome is we're all here tonight. Thank you. And had he not responded correctly, amen, it'd be different. Events. Joseph's response. The event was his brethren and their diatribes and their hatred and their vehement, amen, venomous attitudes towards him. Amen. And the event was being thrown into a pit. And the event was being carried off by Midianites. The event was being sold to Ishmaelites. The event was being sold to Egypt. The event was being on the auction block. The event was going in the Potiphar's house. And can I tell you, his response is what saved the man. He could have walked around spending his days in a sullen, snarling attitude. Amen. Hating his brethren and hating Midianites and hating Ishmaelites and hating Egyptians and hating Potiphar. And he'd have never gone anywhere. He'd have died an ignominious death and we'd have never heard of him. But somewhere he said, I ain't going to live like that. Nope. Nope. And so he was faithful in what was given him. And you don't tend to promote snarling people. Sullen people with chips on their shoulders and fights against life. They tend to stay where they are. Amen. Hopefully out of sight and out of mind because nobody wants to be around them. And they're like the people that Brother Emery talked about today. Amen. That all they think is the world has cut them short. And they can't see all the people they're hurting. Joseph refused to respond like that. I'll not live that way. I'll not act that way. I uh, No, 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 not here. It ain't going to be that way. And so the outcome was God blessed him. Blessed everything he did. He was promoted up through the ranks. He became the steward of the house. Amen. His master Potiphar knew not what he even owned. And that was the outcome. Then there was the event of Potiphar's wife. And there was his response. And then that wonderful, glorious outcome of going to jail. 
Sometimes we don't understand the outcome. And we may think, now God, somewhere this equation ain't correct because I was faithful and I was right and I was true and this is my thank you? I'm in prison. And so he could have spent his days cursing God and cursing Potiphar and cursing his wife. Amen. But somewhere he said, I ain't going to live that way. Amen. And, and, and this, my heart's going to be clean. My spirit's going to be clean. And therefore my cell is going to be clean. Thank you. And the, and the warden noticed his cell was clean. said, why don't you come clean my office like that? Happy to, sir. And then maybe a few more cellmates said, I'm tired of the rats and the lice. How do you get them out? Well, this is what you do. One thing leads to another. Next thing you know, he is the under warden. And the Bible said whatsoever was done in that prison, he was the doer of it. That was his response. Amen. And then one day a baker and a butler come, and we know the story. They have a dream, and they give the... And, and he gives the interpretation. And the butler, he says, three days you're going to be restored to Pharaoh. And the baker smiles. He said, this is my dream. And he said, three days your head's coming off your shoulders. And uh, it happened. And then the butler was returned to his master. And he said, I will never forget you. You're awesome. Joseph, I love you. I won't ever forget you. And he went his way and he forgot him. And uh, Joseph's response could have been, you sorry twerp. You little two-bit felon. I should have let you rot. But somewhere he said, no, life's too short to go around with a rock in your shoe. We ain't going to live that way here. We're not going to live that way here. You know, I did, I did, as God is my witness, I did not plan this. this. This is flowing into Brother Emery's and Brother Wilson's. And this is revival preaching. This is revival preaching. Amen. Can I tell you, if everybody will catch the revelation, if my heart, my mind, my soul, my spirit can look up, you talk about a light of the world. You talk about something powerful in this dark, dim, dismal, wretched excuse of humanity. Yet they can see there's somebody that's making it. There's somebody that's loving God. There's somebody that in spite of what comes or goes, they know how to respond correctly. And when they see the outcomes, you say, but the trials, the traumas, the tribulations. Well, his stock went down for 20 years. If you were investing in Joseph Limited, you would have thought you made a bad investment. But in one day, the stock went through the roof. And before the sun set, he had his own throne. And he was the harbinger of, 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 of nutritional salvation for that part of the world, let alone that nation. And the outcome of his faithfulness. Seven years of plenty. Amen. Two years of famine. He's ruling the nation and nations through his dealings. When one day, ten boys he hadn't seen for 20 years. They're not just men now. They're borderline getting into elderly men. And he knows them, but they don't know him. And this is where the response got a little tricky. And he put them through their paces. And I lean on your knowledge of that entire scenario to simply say, after they had jumped through many hoops 
and had wrung their hands and rent their clothes. He walked into their midst after they began to bring up the old refrain. We should have never done to Joseph what we did. It was an event and that was our response and this is our outcome. And Joseph walked into their midst and he said, the event was thus and so, but my response is different and this is the outcome. I am Joseph, your brother. God sent me ahead. We've got five more years of famine, but God is going to see us through. It's a law, brother. Two plus two is four equals MC squared. Can I tell you, brother? E plus R will always equal O. And they were spared. They were spared. You want to talk about David? The event was the lion. The event was the bear. The event was Eliab. The event was the giant. The events were King Saul repeatedly. The response was, I'll bring the bear down. I'll bring the lion down. I'm going after the, uh, the giant. Thank you, Eliab. Giant, your head's coming off your shoulder. King Saul, I could have killed you many times. I will not touch the Lord's anointed. And the outcome was he became the greatest king that Israel ever knew. And the father of our Messiah... Because E plus R equals O. I read a study one time of a psychologist that began working with two brothers, very, very close in age, less than a year apart. His father was an alcoholic of the worst sort. And he worked with the boys for several years in the processes of doing his part, best he could to help mend their world. And through the years, unbeknownst to them, he would check on them. He'd find out their status, where they were, what was up. And he watched one become a highly successful, as far as the world is concerned, businessman, husband, and father. And he watched the other one as he ended up an alcoholic, ever bit as bad, if not worse, than his father. And he finally approached each of them at different times. He asked them both the same question, and remarkably, they both answered the exact same way. To the well-to-do, well-off, good father and provider, why? Did you become the man you became? His answer was, with a father like mine, how could you expect anything else? And when he found the derelict, homeless, amen, all but shoeless, certainly penniless, why did you become the man you have become? His answer was, with a father like mine, how could you expect anything different? Wow. They both had the exact same event, but they offered up two different responses. And they opened it up with two different outcomes. Can I tell you something? Because you've been born again of the water and the spirit does not free you, amen, from the mathematical formulas of life. And I don't care how long you've been in the church. If it's five minutes or 50 years, E plus R will always equal O. I remember one time listening to Sister Donna Linville told a most fascinating story. I'm not going to preach very long. I'm really not. Most fascinating story. How that when she was a teenage girl, her father was not in church, her mother was trying to raise her and siblings and, and, and in the church, and she was a teenager, and, and she was sitting in the back with about 11 other teenagers, give or take, of the same age, and they were cutting up that night. They were really carrying on. They were in a church of, uh, uh, between 200 and 225 
uh, back in those days, considered a very, very large church for that time and place. And uh, they were carrying on. They were cutting up. And their pastor was trying to preach the word of the Lord. And they were back there doing their thing, oblivious to what was going on. And, and so finally the pastor looked at him and he hit the pulpit. He said, hey, hey, you young people back there, sit up. He said, don't you go anywhere. When service is over, I want to see every one of you and your parents. So, when service was over, here were the 12 young people and their parents. Some were siblings. Amen. But pretty much parentage was represented. And her mother, she said, was a very quiet woman. She was a sweet woman, very quiet. One of the parents stepped forward and said, Pastor, I do not appreciate you embarrassing my son or daughter in front of the congregation like that. And another piped up and said, I feel the exact same way, thank you. And another and another. And there were two mothers there of two girls that did not go along with the spies of evil report. And Sister Linville's mama got up, timid, sweet little woman, and said, Donna, stand up. Donna, I said, stand up. She stood up. You walk over here and you apologize to the man of God and when you get home, I will deal with you further. And the other mother stood up more tremulous than the first and did much the same thing and the two girls apologized. And when Sister Linville told that story, she said, several decades have come and gone. And of those 12 kids, guess how many are living for God? And guess which two of that 12 are the ones still living for God? Her and that other girl whose mama's back, the man of God. I'm here to tell you, brother, E plus R will always equal O. The event plus your response. This is why the Apostle Paul could speak of five times getting 40 stripes, save one. That was quite an event. Three different events of being beaten with rods. Once was an event of being stoned. Three events of being shipwrecked. A day and a night he was in the deep journeyings. Often events. Often perils, plural, of water. Perils of robber. Perils of mine own countrymen. Perils of the heathen. Perils of the city. Perils of the wilderness. Event after event after event after event after event. In weariness and painfulness and watchings and hunger and thirst and fastings and cold and nakedness. And then on top of all that, the care of all the churches, it was one event after another. What was his response? Well, our light affliction is but for a moment. It worketh for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. Hallelujah. An event one day was a messenger of Satan that came to beat the tar out of him. And God, God allowed it to be so. And he besought God three different occasions. Amen. For God to take it away. That was the event. That was the response. The outcome was God said, my grace is sufficient, sir. I'm sorry to tell you, I've pastored people who all but said by their actions, 
Well then, God, you can take your grace and take a long walk. Because I don't like my lot in life. And many times, who does? But he said, oh no, not me. All right, God, here's my response. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities. Oh, God, I'll take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches. And this. Here's my response. Amen. Because when I'm weak, I'll be strong. I'm looking for a different outcome. And I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the outcome that's coming my way. He understood he had the revelation that E plus R equals O. That's why he said rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing in everything. In everything. Not everything that happens may be the will of God, but in everything you can say God's good and God's great and God's mighty and God's powerful. Why? Because E plus R will always equal O. And we may not really know it, but we've got to know it that all things work to the good of them that love God. Who are the called according to his purpose. I will have a proper response such as the man boy it's one thing to preach something it's another thing if it comes and parks itself on your doorstep and I know that the man whose beautiful daughter as much as she understood Righteousness and modesty lived it. She didn't smoke. She didn't drink. She didn't carry on. And she had ample opportunities. Graduated valedictorian of her university. And within the week, with the world of promise before her, a stone drunk like a ship derelict at the sea, hits her head on. It didn't kill her. And in a short time, all contusions and bruises were fixed and she came back. Except for mentally, something had happened something bad to the point the long story short she was committed into an asylum on good days she was in a cell alone on bad days she was in a straight jacket and the father who was a God fearing man would pray and pray and call friends and ask them to pray and they would call other friends and ask them to pray and he never knew much about fasting before but he he got into fasting and and on and on and on and and this went on month after month and year after year until now it was the third year and now every trip to go see his daughter was like a trip into Hades itself and one day as he parked his car in the car lot he snapped he screamed he hit the steering wheel and he yelled what kind of a God are you anyway that would do that to my daughter and refuse to hear my prayer God's response he spoke to him and said lift your hands and praise me and thank me for all my dealings 
with your daughter. And he was rattled, but he, he couldn't do it. And he got out, he locked his car. He's walking his way across the parking lot. He starts up the steps. And the Lord again says, lift your hands and praise me and thank me for all my dealings with your daughter. And he couldn't. He made his way down the corridors to the desk. It was a two-nurse day as they began to walk him down to the cell where his daughter was. He knew that was a bad omen. If he was allowed to go by himself, she was just silent. One nurse meant not good. Two nurses meant straight jacket and rantings and ravings. They began to approach the cell. And he could already hear his daughter screaming, shrieking, yelling. And while his feet feeling like lead, the Lord said, lift your hands and praise and thank me for all my dealings with your daughter. And the man stopped. And he began to shake. And the nurses thought they understood. They couldn't blame him. But then he began to really tremble. And then they thought, oh no, oh no. His hands began to go up in the air. And with his hands raised, he said, God, God, I don't understand, but I praise you and I thank you for all your dealings with my daughter. And the cell grew quiet. And they all looked standing. And from that cell, they began to hear the first really sane voice they'd heard in three years. Daddy? Daddy? Is that you out there, Daddy? And God had come down and healed that man's daughter. I don't pretend to understand it all. I don't pretend to have every answer, but I do tell you this, brother. E plus R equals O. Whether it seems to fit or not, or it's come to pass yet, all events plus proper responses will bring an outcome to the good of them that love God. I know it's easy for me to preach it. But God, you know, I do try to live it. Let's all stand. Seven sons, three daughters, 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, a very great household. God only knows how many servants are dead. Had I stationed a young man at the four points of this building and had them come Yelling, Job, Job. The Chaldeans came, Job. The Sabaeans came, Job. Fire from heaven fell, Job. The wind. Even in this large auditorium, we could have completed the scenario 
within 60 seconds. I know because I've done it. I'm telling you one phone call and 60 seconds can turn your world upside down and inside out. And Job could have spent his days cursing the Sabaeans, cursing and reviling the Chaldeans, cursing his faithless, feckless friends, cursing his wife, cursing his God, cursing his decomposing body, and went off into oblivion, never to be heard from. E plus R equals O. He shaved his head. He rent his garment. He fell on his face. And while heaven and hell waited, he said, Lord, take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I got a word for you, sir. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, 1,000 she asses, seven sons, three daughters, 140 years, four generations of kids and grandkids. And the outcome was he died being old and full of days. And I'm sorry. I've met people who hate preachers. They hate church. They hate saints. They hate the Bible. They hate God because of what life has dealt them. But E plus R will always equal O. We're not because God's so far from being through tonight. We're not going to have an altar call, per se. But ma'am, sir, mama, daddy, young lady, young man, if you've lived any time at all, you've already found out some of the cards of life are not what you expected. Not what you'd hoped for. But I'm going to tell you what I think we need to do right now. Is play that hand right. With a proper response. I don't understand everything. Except I know God's good. And God's great. And God's faithful. I'm sorry. That's why I really get thrilled when I hear you at 69 get the Holy Ghost in one service. And you baptized 25. That's why I get excited when I hear about God doing financial miracles for churches and people. 
call Z plus R equals O and it'll never change. So where, where you are, think with me just a moment of some of the events in your life. And as you begin to think, there's probably one, maybe two or three events that even as I speak are looming down in your mind and in your heart. We're not coming to the front. But we need to put our hands in the air. And say, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God's good. God's great. God's mighty. God's holy. God's pure. My God, I still love you. My God, I still praise you. My God, I still worship you. Come on now, let's get some proper response. Come on, mama. Come on, daddy. Come on, son. Come on, daughter. Right now, right now. Come on, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, right where you are. Right where you are. Come on, sir. Come on, come on. Give it to God right now where you are.